Hello and welcome back to SINLAB podcast tagged Genotype Testing and Sickle Cell Management. I remain your host, Uche Namadi, and I'm with the incredible Dr. Lani Oweye, Thank you. who is the consultant hematologist in SINLAB Nigeria. Please do not forget to like, subscribe, share, and follow SINLAB Nigeria on YouTube and on Spotify. So we have been taking you on a journey. We started with understanding genotype testing and why it matters. And then we went on to talk about living with sickle cell challenges and triumphs. Then we talked about advances in sickle cell management and treatment. Now we will be talking about breaking the cycle, raising awareness and prevention. So before we dive into this part, I would like Dr. Oye to touch on um, support for sickle cell patients. How can healthcare systems support sickle cell patients. Oh, beautiful. Just briefly. Health education, the first thing, and awareness. Yeah. You you really cannot go wrong on that mm -hmm. because the two commonest um, factors that determine the outlook of a disease in Africa, Sub-Saharan mm -hmm. Africa, ignorance and poverty. So health education... Oh, wow. <laughs> two zero. Yeah. Wow. So health education and awareness, mm -hmm. yeah, you can never really do wrong. So whatever systems are going to be put in place, you must you must be um committed to education. Okay. You know, in at all form, fronts. Okay. Patients, stakeholders, and even the the healthcare providers mm -hmm. must be, you know, continued education, especially sure. on that. Then of course we need to actually establish more specialized sickle cell centers. Hmm. You know that focuses more on sickle cell patients. You know, you know, um, I'm very well aware, well aware of the Sickle Cell Foundation. I've been doing a fantastic job on that. Hmm. But maybe we actually need to need to have more of those centers. Okay. You know, in the country to be able to, you know, cater for the teeming sickle cell population that we have in Nigeria because Nigeria has the highest number of sickle cell anemia patients in the entire world. So it's basically like our thing. So we must have more specialized centers, you know, to cater for them. It also helps, you know, the the his his assessment because if you're okay. actually able to have more of those specialized centers in several parts of the country, yeah. people are people can you know, easily move easily. So yeah. you don't have to be coming to maybe Lagos all the time and things like that to actually have some form of specialized care. Anyways, um, I think the teaching hospitals are actually doing a whole lot of work on that and the general hospitals because nice. we definitely would have specialists who would actually take care of sickle cell patients, you know, you know, on that. So I, I think we are not really doing badly, you know, okay. in that regard. Okay. Then of course we need to also increase access, you know, to healthcare. Care. Hmm. You understand? We said that, um, I said earlier on that it's, it's a disease that is usually not very pocket friendly. Mm -hmm. So um, we need to think about um, insurance, you know, health insurance for mm -hmm. sickle cell sufferers. You yeah. know, there's probably a way to actually have insurance. Then um, most of them, at some point or the other, during their management, they may need blood transfusion. Hmm. You understand? So um, there has to be a system in place that actually makes, you know, that more uh, readily available, yeah. you know, for our patients. Yeah. Because, I mean, um, at some point or the other, sickle cell patients will get transfused. So sure. we really need to do that. And then we know how scarce blood is, you understand? Yeah. So that's one aspect also that actually would help, you know, to, um, um, you know, um, um, provide, you know, support more for our sickle cell patients. And okay. even the NGOs should do more to collaborate, you know, with, you know, um, uh, specialized centers, international organizations, mm. and of course, do more also in the area of en enlightenment. We are doing a whole lot on that, but I yeah. think we can also do more because you still have people who really do know next to nothing about it. So we really need to kind of like go more to the grassroots, mm -hmm. you know, like um, the, the by Professor Adeyu was doing years ago, we would go to secondary schools mm. in, inside yeah, you know, the you states, you know, yes. to actually speak speak with them, like yeah. actually bringing it to, to their level. So we may need to, you know, do all this to support then of course our health insurance had mentioned that yeah. we need to find a way you know to do that because most people who suffer from sickle cell some of them are really not well able to actually um, meet up with the financial demands of the disease mm. you know you see a whole lot of them in um resource limited you know settings so mm. we need to think about this and find a way to actually be able to make provisions for them you know under our insurance you know scheme and all that so these are actually things i can think about right yeah. now i, I like how you kept mentioning awareness awareness yes. awareness so mm. I would like our listeners to know why is early education about genotype compatibility so important? We need to catch them young. 
is the hour for me. Like, <laughs> why is Richard asking this type of question? <laughs> knowledge, they say, lights the way. Hmm. So, um, um, let me digress a little bit. Mm. They will tell you, if you are going to beat cancer, mm. like what everybody did, then you need to know early. Mm. You need to be aware. And mm. one of the ways you actually know if you're actually predisposed to have some certain kinds of cancers that have genetic predisposition mm. is to do your genetic analysis. Mm. So the same way with, with sickle cell. Mm -hmm. So we need to know early. We need to know on time. You mm. understand? A lot of people got, got themselves into sticky situations because they did not know on time. And of course, some people even tried to know, but they got wrong results and they did not verify it. So that was why I'm, I'm actually underlining the fact that mm. you have, you know, more um, accurate testing nowadays. And um, if you're not so sure, having a second opinion about your genotype it's not, is, is not yeah. exactly because um, a whole lot of decisions you're going to make in life is going to be based on that. You understand? So it's important for people to know early before they start falling in love because sometimes when you fall <laughs> your in love... is shallow. <laughs> <laughs> because sometimes when you fall in love, like the what what we say, fall in love. You are falling and then your head is not is not there with you. Hey. you so it's 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 very, very important for okay. us. To... So speaking for down this awareness, how can parents <laughs> schools and religious institutions help spread this awareness. I know you talked about a certain church that you must present your mm -hmm. results and mm -hmm. if they see any chua chua thing there, they, they no go green to marry <laughs> you. <laughs> so just um, throw more emphasis. How can parents yeah. first school and religious institutions support this I, I, awareness? Good. I, I think a whole lot of these public institutions are already doing that, mm. but really they can do more. Mm -hmm. You understand, um, one of the ways you can actually create awareness is to actually bring, you know, um, um, experienced resource persons mm -hmm. to actually um, talk to people about it. Mm. Um, I mean, I I've always said it, I've been invited to a church, a, a convention of a church before, and it was a week-long convention, mm. and they dedicated one day to medicals, truly. So they invited some medical personnel to come and do testing for people. Nice. Um, let me say this, in my estate, we did something for the end of year, Mm -hmm. um, there is um, someone who has a lab who lives in my estate and of course me and then we just decided that the estate decided that we should come on board and then test people hmm. that you know um, the end of the year so we did genotype testing Yes, the, nice. the estate partnered with them. It was subsidized. Wow. Estate paid, you know, most of the money. I'm not even sure people Amazing. paid. So, but it was subsidized hmm. because the person who actually did it in 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 our lab hmm. also lives in the estate. So they paid some money, and then we did that, hmm. and then we did genotype testing. We did hepatitis B, hepatitis C. We did, you know, some of these things, and then. Um, that's a way of creating awareness and then we mm. talk to people about their health. So you see a lot more people coming up now, you mm -hmm. know, with these things because one of the ways to do is to know mm -hmm. and they would say ignorance is not an excuse in law. Okay. Understand? It's also not an excuse here. So we need to actually um, ride on this wave of awareness mm -hmm. and bring it into our homes, into our yeah. organizations, yeah. you know, and parents should be aware, mm -hmm. you know, and get it done for their kids on time. You know, it's it's not even parents who are carriers. I mean, mm. parents who are have sickle cell patients. No, mm. I mean, you need to also test because you need to test for if you're a carrier. You need to know on time because you know that two carriers who carry both sickle cell genes, mm. when they marry, they are likely to actually have um, offspring with sickle cell anemia. So mm. I'm you not need by to Mendelian yeah, course. exactly. So <laughs> <laughs> you really need to, you know, parents need to do that, you know, for their children on time, and they need to educate them also. That on the education things, you part know, is very important. To do. Yeah. So it's it's very 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 important. So. so we cannot do wrong with it. And then we, we are already doing something about it. Then I think we should just keep at it. So that, that's my that's my. Okay. Take on it. So now genetic counseling. What role does it play in preventing sickle cell disease? Plays a huge role. Because when you go for genetic counseling, the doctor is going to tell you the going to interpret your results, going to tell you about the implication of the results that you have, all the pros and cons, and all the options that you have. Going for genetic counseling makes you make informed decisions about your future. Oh, no doctor would force you and say, force any decision on you. But then it helps you to understand what your genotype is. It helps you to understand the implication of your genotype, hmm. you know, not only on you, 
but on your um, future offspring. On your entire generation. Exactly. So, you know, you are, you are educated on that. And then the pros and cons or whatever decisions you choose to make while telling you about all the options that you have. Because I've had to do it a lot of time for intending couples. Mm. And all I just do is lay down all the cards for them on the table, you know, tell them about the pros and cons. So it helps you to make an informed decision. And making an informed decision is one of the key things because one of the ways to actually reduce um, the rate of sickle cell anemia is to actually um, um, prevent, I mean, to actually not, you know, um, um, decide to, um, um, uh, for carriers, both carriers, you know, mm -hmm. not to, you know, come together mm -hmm. and, and then conjugate and things like that. So the only way you know whether you're a carrier or if you're a carrier is when you actually go for, you know, ge genotype testing and then you go for genetic counseling. So the genetic counseling is like, a, it sheds a light, you know, and everything and helps you to make informed decision about whatever it is, you know, you want to do. Wow. Okay. Now, speaking on policy changes, yeah. what policy changes or advocacy efforts are needed to support sickle cell patients? Policy changes. Sickle cell patients need mm -hmm. to be heard. I don't know, to my feeling, um, Nigeria has the, I, I keep saying this, I even say to, say, say to my student, <laughs> Nigeria has the highest number of sickle cell patients in the entire world. Three zero. So there is no reason mm. for us not to really be serious about it. Hmm. You understand? So yeah. um, for the policymakers, they need to be heard. We need to understand that this is our problem. This is our thing. And then all hands has to be on deck to ensure that we, we, we explore all possible ways to mitigate, you know, against the disease. Ignorance, poverty, education, continued education and awareness tackles ignorance. Then poverty, that's where policies come in. So we need to have policies that actually improves access to healthcare for sickle cell patients and, and makes it a bit better for them. Mm. You understand? Because you have a significant percentage of sufferers who are poor or mm. resource limited. Wow. Let me use that word. So our policies need to put this, our policymakers need to put this at the back of, our, of their minds and formulate policies that would actually um, ensure that there's increased access to care and then um, access to care for sickle cell patients is made more affordable. Okay. So... Coming to the communities and organizations, how can communities and organizations better support sickle cell patients? Inclusion, inclusion, inclusion. Understanding the disease and inclusion. As I said... Carry um, them along. Yes. Probably even make them part of the policy makers. You find out that there are some organizations where, um, well, it's not a proper practice and I know proper organizations wouldn't do that. Mm -hmm. But... There, I'm very sure there will still be organizations when, when they know someone um, is, there are no policies that are protecting, you know, sick class. Hmm. You know, there are some organizations when you keep going in and out of the hospital hmm. and they are using their HMO, mm -hmm. they find a way to lay you off. Hmm. Hmm. That's unfair. I know. They're oh, brah, wow. They're so, and then, you know, sickle cell patients, of course, compared to the general population, mm -hmm. they are likely to go to the hospital, they are likely to frequent the hospital more. Mm -hmm. So now, such organizations have to understand, you know, the health needs, you know, the health peculiarities of staff, mm. and then ensure to protect that uh, as much as they can. You understand? You can actually move them from um, departments where um, work is very tedious to less tedious, you know, departments where at least they will not, you know, be exposed to stress for long periods of time and they will not be going in and out of the hospital, you know, frequently. Because a whole lot of times you find out that organizations, corporations say, oh, I'm losing money. Mm. Uh, so this particular person is not productive. Sometimes there's no proper root cause analysis as to why that is. Mm -hmm. And sometimes there's no proper recourse to that and say, okay, oh, this person has this, you know, peculiarity. Mm. Let's find a way yeah. as an organization yeah. to actually see. So these mm -hmm. are some of the things that, you know, we are also can do to actually support them. Then we also need to understand the emotional and mental needs. It's not just all about giving people money or giving them drugs and yeah. all that. We need to understand that. And then we need to be ready, be able, we need to be ready to support them. 
you know, yeah. you know, on that. And then, so for me, it's it's not something that we can exhaust in a day. It's something that we have to imbibe into our practice and something we have to con- consciously do, you know, all the time to ensure that our sickle cell patients are adequately supported to attain and achieve their dreams. Okay, so diving in a bit deeper, can we talk about the practical steps we can take to reduce the burden of sickle cell disease in the future? Practical steps. Interesting. <laughs> <laughs> I think the first thing is to increase awareness. Okay, which we're doing now. That's the first thing. Mm-hmm. Then the second thing is to also um, 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 improve our health behaviors. And I will explain what I mean by that for want of a better word to use. Like... Um, you are a carrier of the sickle cell trait. Mm-hmm. Your intending partner is a carrier of the sickle cell trait. Mm-hmm. And you're well aware of the implications and the options that you have. And then you look at all the situations around you, you find out that, of course, there are other, there are so many options you can choose to tow. Mm-hmm. The fact that you both are carriers of the trait does not actually mean you, you should not, you know, you know, come together. Nobody wants to stop love. There are options you can choose to adopt, you can choose to do pre-implantation genetic testing, can do, you choose to do all that. But then you find out that you are not even economically empowered to do that. Or your cultural values and beliefs does not even believe in an adoption. Mm-hmm. And then you still go ahead and marry and bring forth children who are sick class into the world. So I don't really think that's cool my own opinion. So mm-hmm. we need to be real on certain things. Mm-hmm. We need to face some realities, you mm-hmm. know, about certain things because the only way to actually prevent c you know, from increasing is for AS and AS folks, you know, one of the major ways is mm-hmm. to actually prevent, you know, them from coming to the world in the first place. Yeah. So, and prevention could mean not, you know, tying the knot with a partner who has a trait. Prevention could also mean, okay, doing your pre-implantation genetic testing to actually choose genotype that you want for your child. Another way is a prenatal diagnosis where okay. you probably know you, you, your spouse is pregnant, the child is coming in SS and then you feel, okay, I don't want this SS child. You probably want, you know, things like that. Mm-hmm. So the only way, those are one of the, these are the practical steps that we can actually take because that's the only way that prevention the only way we can actually prevent sickle cell anemia from occurring is to prevent it from happening in the first place. Yeah. So that's that's for me prevention. the only practical, you know, we awareness, mm-hmm. increased awareness and then prevention. So that, that's, wow. that's that's thank that's you very much, Dr. Wei. You're welcome. And thank you, our dear listeners, because we have come to the end of this beautiful Sinla podcast series. We hope you've been able to take away a lot of points that would help you. Please feel free to share if the points we have raised here today have act- will actually have actually made a difference, let me put it that way, in your life. And once again, we say thank you to Dr. Weye. The pleasure is As mine. part You're of our welcome. culture, okay. we would like you to sign on our legacy board. Okay. To say thank you. So I have a legacy now. Yes. <laughs> For gracing us with okay. your presence. All right. Pleasure is mine. Yeah. So we'd like to say thank you to our listeners. You know, genotype testing has, it has evolved though. Honestly, so the days of using the genotype tanks to run tests. Yeah. I know you talked about That's some so like yesterday. Yeah, <laughs> I know you talked about using methods like um, HPLC, where you actually see the quantitative. I've never tried mention that. Yes, those methods. HPLC. Yeah. I know you mentioned methods, but I didn't think you listed the <laughs> yeah, methods. Yeah, performance liquid chromatography. Yeah, so those HPLC are the things that actually you're not limited. Exactly, you're not limited to the expertise of the person doing the genotyping, mm-hmm. and like Dr. So where I said, if you were in doubt, go and get a second opinion. Sure. It does not take anything away Mm-mm. from you. Thank you very much once again for joining yeah. us. Do not forget to like, subscribe, share, and follow Synlab Nigeria on YouTube and on Spotify. You can also follow Synlab Nigeria across all social media platforms. I remain your host, Uche Namadi. Thank you for joining us, and I'm signing off. <laughs>